On Earth, we have everything we need to survive. Air to breathe, and food and water to sustain life. It's incredible the effort that was needed to design this life support system flying around the planet. Aboard the International Space Station, a crew of astronauts from around the globe capture the wonders of our world, as few can. From this unique vantage point, we gain insight into the impact we have on the environment and witness what humankind can accomplish when we work together. The arrival to the space station was possibly the happiest moment of my life. That was a pretty wild ride. Looking at Earth from space, we need to start to consider ourselves more as crew members, not passengers. Hello, world. It's nice to meet you. Uh, so, thank you for your time. Again, this is for College of Media, college student audience. Great to talk to you. Uh, thank you. Um, so, describe the passion you have behind this project. Well, I certainly, after finishing uh, our last film, Hubble 3D, right. Um, I certainly thought back then in 2010 that I wanted to revisit the idea of looking at the Earth in IMAX from space, mm. and especially from the completed space station, which right. we did make a film called Blue Planet in 1990, uh, which of which I was very proud, but that was all done from the shuttle on very limited missions. Mm. And now we have a completed space station with a beautiful cupola from which was built for viewing the Earth that we could take advantage of. So that's that's how it started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and it just it kind of blossomed out of that. We everybody loved Blue Planet so much and yeah. and just being able to, to be on orbit for a year. Um, 403 days and and get changing seasons and and yeah. being able to shoot digitally and and get so much more data mm. so much more images than we got ever got before I mean 11 and a half terabytes of, of wow. data from space for this film and it just gave us tons and tons of stuff to use and the advancements what's changed cameras Cam cameras have have improved a lot the digital cameras we had to shoot digitally on this film because we didn't have a space shuttle to take film up and back. Right. Uh, you know, 10 pounds of film is three minutes. Uh, a little iPhone-sized data pack is 30 minutes. It's a lot easier to justify that in in this world of NASA these days. You can do take two, three, take two, four, three, five four, if yeah, you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whereas in the old days of film, there, take one. Take or one nothing. is it. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Uh, that's that's the main thing, and and the digital format allows us a little bit more personal, you know, time with the astronauts you know, their daily life, you know, right. haircuts and showers and exercise. And, and I think that that allowed them to relax and yeah. not feel they had to have it perfect on the first take. Right. And usually they did do it perfectly on the first take, but it gave them a lot more flexibility mm -hmm. and they had fun with it. Do you feel this is more of, a, of an environmental film because you're able to show certain things and certain, you know, Amazon, the, you know, the rainforest, mm -hmm. the, the, the melting of the glaciers, you're showing everybody that. We, we set out to, to do, do that, okay. certainly. Um, we s always start with a, a laundry list of, of uh, exterior scenes and interiors that we want to get, but mm -hmm. as we're training the crews, we, we, uh, we invite their input and mm. their, their own creativity, uh, we hope will come to the fore during that process, and it usually does. Mm. And they said, we're going to bring you to your knees <laughs> with imagery, even really? though we're not allowed to, you know, to interrupt their schedule, their regular schedule of science and and uh, s uh, station maintenance. Mm. Uh, they shot this all on weekends and their time off, and they did bring us to our knees. Yeah, with it's the beautiful. Two hundred and fifty thousand frames of five K data. Now, in particular, the is it true we you could not get films uh, or shots of of nighttime, right. but now you can. Correct. Can you describe that? In, in the old days, it, film just didn't have the speed, uh, you know, 500 ISO if you were lucky, mm. uh, and then that could be damaged by radiation in space. Uh, and then the lenses were not as fast. Today we've got, I, you know, sensors that go up, you know, hundreds of thousands of ISO, right. and we've got lenses for these cameras that are, you know, four times faster, which means they can record, you know, magnitudes lower light levels than, than previously available. So now we're, it opens us up to, you know, night cities, moonlit 
you know, the pass over the, the, the Bahamas at night with a full moon. You can see the reefs at the Bahamas at night. Wow. Uh, the stars, yeah. uh, aurora, all those things became available to us with, with this digital technology and, and the Canon cameras. For college students that want to get into this type of career, whether it's making films or even, I understand, uh, teaching, um, what advice would you give them? <laughs> well, if it's um, wanting to make films, mm. it's definitely, um, you know, there are lots of great film schools mm. around that I'm sure they're aware of now that, that uh, do have programs where you get to experiment and make your own films and be on each other's crews. And, mm -hmm. But, you know, the one thing that I find um, in talking to students is that the expectation sometimes is they get out of college and think, right. give me a film, where's my film where's to direct? Yeah. Right. And that's the hard part uh, is really, I always say, take any job you can Absolutely. get. Mm. Doesn't matter if it's the lowest on the pole. It's a people-based industry. Mm -hmm. You can spew out all the resumes you want, and they'll go to the either the wastebasket or the bottom drawer. But if you work once for a crew that likes you, that sees that you're uh, part of a team and a, and a good player, you'll mm -hmm. get hired again. And that's I mean that's just based on my own experience. Yeah. I mean I. I uh, just went from, I never had to look for work, wow. uh, basically after the first couple of jobs, yeah, and yeah. it's very much like that. Yeah. Uh, I think on the other side of things, there's the content, which is if you want to be a script writer, then that's a kind of obvious different path. Mm -hmm. But um, meeting filmmakers and you know having that mm -hmm. opportunity to have a dialogue, that's what gets you started. Mm -hmm. and, and I think today with, with all the, the, the release platforms mm -hmm. out there, it's a lot easier to get your film out right. to where people can see it. You mean like social media? Like social yeah. media yeah. and you know the, the Netflix, the, mm -hmm. all these other Got it. platforms that are out there at Hulu, you, know, right. you can name a million of them. Uh, for, for a student filmmaker, that's a, a good way to get at least your work out and in, in, to get seen by people. And uh, if it's good, you know, it's going to go and... And I also think if, if there's ever a, an opportunity that presents itself that you say, oh, well, I'm not really interested in that or that's not my field, don't oh. ever do that. Because really? okay, every good. single film I've ever worked on in 45, 50 years has been a complete and utter education mm -hmm. and a surprise. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you file it all and stow it, and it each one feeds into the next. So be open to everything. Everything. Real quick, in one or two words, is having a mentor important for a college student? I think having a mentor is a wonderful thing, however you can get it. I mean, I'm not so familiar with the formal mentorship programs right. because they weren't around when I was college age. Mm -hmm. But uh, Graham Ferguson, the co-inventor co co and co-founder of IMAX, has been a marvelous mentor to me and to this day is still the emeritus on this film. He was the founder of the space unit mm. as well as the co-inventor of IMAX. So I was blessed with that. But then there were other times when I w went off and did completely other things. Right. Uh, but mentorship is a wonderful, Absolutely. wonderful thing. Yeah. Absolutely great. In, anytime you can work with somebody who is already established and, and follow in their footsteps, it's it's the best thing to do. And, and Tony and Graham have been my mentors for 40 years. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you. <coughs> Hello, world. It's nice to meet you. I've been waiting for this moment to come out. The best part about being an astronaut is looking back at our home planet. Especially at night, the cities are so bright and so vibrant and so colorful. It is just overwhelmingly beautiful. The world is IMAX, in cooperation with NASA, invites you aboard the International Space Station for an incredible journey. It's a giant universe out there. There's lots of stars, lots of planets, but there's nowhere like Earth. To explore the challenges we face and the changes we can make to secure our future. From the sky to the sea to the air in the end, it's about understanding how the natural world works, and then it's about expanding the possibilities of what we human beings can do. 
a beautiful planet. The voyage begins April 29th, exclusively in IMAX and IMAX 3D theaters. <laughs>